Hello and welcome to this training from Pearson. This is a BTEC Tech Award training in animal care from 2022 and this session is looking at preparing for external assessments. I'm Shelley Roberts and I will be your trainer for today. So let's have a look at what the agenda of today's training is. We're going to be looking at the overall component content, the overall assessment, the assessment structure, and then we'll look at some example questions in the mark scheme and sources of support. And I'll also be giving you a tour of the website so you know where you can find all the useful information you need. So let's start by looking at the components that are for this qualification. So component is the word that we use for it might be known you might know it as module or units. But so for this qualification, they're called components. And there is three. One is animal handling. Two is animal housing and accommodation. And both these are internal um, assessed modules. And they are um, assessed through moderation. And there is a training covering this if you want to know further about these modules. And I will show you where they can find them later. But today we're going to be looking at component three, which is animal health and welfare, and it's the external synoptic assessment. So component three has four assessment objectives, as you can see on the screen. I won't bother reading them out to you. I know you can do that yourself. Um, so if you do want to spend time reading them, obviously, please pause the video. They are available in the specification and I will show you where you can find that shortly. So the um, assessment objectives, we've got A, B and C. So A is animal health, B is animal diseases and C is animal um, animals and legislation. So the assessment will cover all these, but it is a synoptic assessment, which I'll explain shortly. Um, majority of the questions are probably going to be in section A, but they do obviously cover section B and C. So you need to ensure that learners understand um, all elements because they can have any questions that cover anything in this section. As I mentioned, it is in this um, synoptic assessment. Synoptic basically means that it covers the whole qualification as a whole. So it, it, even though we're only assessing on component three, elements from one and two are going to be brought together um, and help and assist them with this. So it has to be um, assessed last. Ideally, you teach one and two first, then you move on to three and then assess three. But that's, you know, there's lots of different delivery models that are available. You might decide to teach component three long and thin um, and you won't obviously um, assess it till the end, but you will be delivering it throughout the across from one and two, for example. Some people decide to do that way. There is some training on called getting um, ready to teach this qualification and we cover those kind of delivery models in that. So if you're looking for that, I can show you where that is later as well. So learners will cover all aspects of animal health. They will um, equip learners with a good understanding of a relationship between looking after and the well-being of animals and the effects that it, it has on maintaining animal strength. The component also looks at an understanding of how animals are used in society and how they are protected by legislation. Now, I know there's a lot of information on this slide, so you don't necessarily need to read it all. I'm only going to highlight the main points. But the whole point of this slide is to kind of say that component three does build directly from one and two, as I've previously said. Um, and component three is not only just looking at signs of health um, causes, transmissions, etc., but also looking at animals in society and relations to ethics and legal aspects, etc. The design of the assessment is to ensure that they uh, have significant strength and challenge the learners to make sure they're ready and understand, obviously, these elements of the units. So before we look at the assessment, I want to take some time to look at command verbs. Now, you'd be like, why do we need to look at command verbs? <laughs> um, and if you've been in training before, you know that I'm very strong on command verbs. What we find is that command verbs are a stumbling point for learners with external assessments. Um, because what we find, and it's often commented on in lead examiner reports, that learners do not understand the command verbs correctly. Therefore, they might do a brilliant answer, but because they've gone in the wrong direction, it hasn't covered enough points that they need. We normally find this, for example, if it's in a compare question, which they might not necessarily get on this course, but um, if it's a compare question and they've just explained, they've not compared, therefore their points are going to be limited, for example. Um, so for on this one, it might say explain, but they only state. And again, they're not going to get those points they need. So it's important that learners understand these command verbs. And as they go through their qualifications, they'll probably do more assessments, have different command verbs. So it's important they understand how to use them. So we do highly recommend that you do external or extra sessions with the learners, say in tutorials or um, 
side sessions to this this module to make sure they understand these command verbs. And you'll, you obviously use them in your learning objectives, etc. But it's just getting used to them and using them on a regular basis with your questions to make sure they are using them correctly. As I mentioned, the lead examiner report um, earlier, you might be like, what's that? The lead examiner report is a report that is created by the lead examiner, obviously. And after each series of uh, exams, they will write a report. And this report will cover things that the learners did well, areas of strength, but also areas that they, the learners might have been weaker on. And it's the, the cohort that set the exam as a whole, not your cohort, it's the whole exam cohort. So it just gives you an opportunity to kind of find out what went well and what didn't. So you can then make sure that your learners going forward know these points so they don't stumble on these same errors. But I will show you where you can find the lead exam reports later. So let's have a look at the assessment structure. So the exam is a two hour exam and it's got 60 points overall. And it's what we call a ramp style. Now a ramp style is where you kind of start on some like multiple choice, easy questions, then you kind of go to your short, medium questions, then you go up to extended answers, so a bigger question, and then you'll drop back down to either short or medium responses, and then finally again, go back up again for a long extended question. So it's kind of a bit like a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. Um, and this is just to kind of like build the, the learner's strength in answering the questions. So they're not just bombarded all at the end. There's like a, a, a nice flow to them. So I'm going to show you some questions now. This has been taken from um, the example paper that's available on the website, which I'll show you later. Obviously, more of these will come available. As, they, as, as they're sat by learners, obviously a couple of months after the exams and once the exam results stuff out, then the papers sometimes come available. So you'll have more to use your students, which obviously is a great tool. Um, so this has just been taken from this and I've put them in order so you can kind of see how the ramp style works. I'm not showing you all the questions. It's just a few screenshots, but I will show you where you can find the whole paper if you wish to use it. So as we open up the exam paper, they will come across the multiple choice ones first. And the key things is the areas that are highlighted in bold. So, for example, it says one. So it's stating that they have to do one. So the learners know they only have to tick one. Um, and it's, for example, one of these behaviours is sign stress. The learner marks it. They move on to the next one. And it's quite important to spend some time with the learners to show them how much time they need to spend on each question. Um, obviously, each learner has a different style. Some of them like to do the long ones, get them out of the way. Some of them like to do it in order. Some of them do the short ones first. I mean. The whole reason it's ramped is so that it should be a nice flow for the learners. But obviously you need to make sure they're aware that they only spend a few minutes on this, these ones. This one is just a short read the question, answer it, move on. They shouldn't be spending too much time on these ones. Then we go on to our short responses. So these ones again are just short and simple to the point. So it says give two methods. They just need to state the method. They don't need to explain the method. They don't need to give us what it is and explain it. Short, sweet, again, not spending too much time on these. They are give two considerations. Consideration one, consideration two. So the considerations may take a little bit longer because they might explain what the consideration is, but um, it shouldn't, it's not a deep meat question. It's only worth two points, so therefore they will get one point for one reason, um, one consideration, and one point for the second consideration. The media responses, um, this will normally be an answer that's kind of like you might have an A and B, so you expanded on it a little bit more. Um, so this one is, for example, you've got a little scenario at the top, then you've got the two, you need to state, state. so again, literally state them, what is it, the symptom, and then you've got the two treatments. They don't need to explain the treatments, they don't need to explain the symptoms, they just need to state them and give. Um, so this is kind of a media response because it builds onto it. Some questions may be, A might have been give two symptoms and um, B might be explain how you would do something. So therefore, again, you might explain a bit more. So therefore, it's building on it a bit more that way. The last section we're going to look at is the um, extended responses. So these are worth six points each um, and they are um, normally given a little scenario. Then they've got the question. And as you can see, this is this example paper that I've taken the form, it was 16 and 20. So before 16 would have been your multiple choice, then your short medium, 
then between 16 and 20 you would probably have some more medium responses and then they'll have question 20. So as you can see it's the up and down kind of approach. These questions I discuss, now these are probably going to be marked in kind of a um, mark scheme kind of situation. It won't be just like they need to state certain words, they get points. It'll be how much in depth they've gone, have they covered all the areas, have they mentioned all the different things. So they're discussing how to prevent the disease spreading of other dogs. They need to kind of talk about lots of different things they will do, not just go one thing. Again, it's we're discussing on 20s assessing. So again, understand those command verbs and how to answer those questions correctly. There is mark schemes available, so it's a good opportunity if you've got past papers and mark schemes together for learners to obviously have a go at these kind of questions. They can then mark each other's. If you've got the mark scheme, they can understand what, what kind of things examiners look for. It's a great little kind of exercise to get learners ready. So as we looked at the questions, I did obviously mention some of these things. So we've got past papers, again, an ex a great tool. The more we have, the better, because then obviously you can do it. And we have got exam wizard, which I'll show you about later. Um, mark schemes, again, if you've got them next to each other, marry on quite nicely. And as I said, the lead exam reports. I go on the about lead exam reports quite a lot. I think it's a very important tool and is not utilised enough. They give some excellent points to help you and your learners. So make sure that you do read them each time they come out. So availability in resets. So the external assessments for this qualification are available twice a year, and that will be in January and May. The first one is going to be assessed in January 24, and obviously the next one for May on, and so on, so on. Um, so when you plan in your course, and as I said, depending on the delivery model that you've done, or depend on what sitting works well, you do need to enter your learners into the series. So you do need to make sure that your um, exams office has let them Pearson know so they know who's sitting it and how many papers you need etc and um, so they can obviously get them to you and then they know what they're sitting in so you do need to plan this ahead and know what it, what who's doing what when and they are permitted to one reset so if they don't pass the first time they can obviously have a reset um, later on so that's why some people might do the January sit in so they could do the reset in May but again it depends on your delivery model So as I've said to you before, this is a, um, a subnautic. So to the termination assessment, they have to be doing it towards the end of their qualification. And as I said, there is a reset option if they want to. Um, however, if learners decide they want to upgrade, so say they got a merit on their first exam and they want to attempt to get a um, distinction, if on that re-attempt they only got a pass, unfortunately they will stick with pass. So you just need to be aware that there is that risk there. Um, majority of students, if they've passed the exam, they're probably more than happy with whatever grade they've got. Um, so yes, so just be aware of that kind of rule that's there. Now this short video, um, it's about 15 minutes long. I was going to show it, but because it's 15 minutes, I don't obviously want you guys to sit here and watch it if, unless you've seen it before, etc. So the link is on the screen. It's a short. Um, a shortened URL so hopefully you can just pause the video type it into your um, browser and you'll come up to come up to the page it's just a video that goes through the process of how exam papers are handled so obviously from the point that the learners completed it and you send it back to Pearson how it gets marked and how that is quality checked and how it's worked um, you know and how many um, how they make sure that obviously everything is done correctly. So it kind of gives a bit of reassurance for you and sometimes the learners like to understand how it works too. So if you wish to do that, if you can't click on the link, obviously please type it into your URL and you can watch that at your own convenience. So this is the point where I get to take you on a little tour of the website. Um, we're going to have a look at some different resources that are available. So we've got delivery guides and I'll show you where all the resources are for the qualification as a whole and where you can get all the sample assessment materials, SAMs from. Um, I will show you where you can find the information on Results Plus and Exam Wizard. So um, Results Plus is obviously where you get the results and stuff from, but Exam Wizard is like a software that does like online exams and you can do like make your own papers and stuff like that. There is some questions in there for this qualification. They will build as obviously we do more, but it is a resource that some um, centres decide to use. So let's go have a look at a little tour of the website. Hold on a second. So hopefully now you can see the Pearson website. Now, with most websites, sometimes the search engines aren't the best and you don't necessarily get to where you want to do. 
the easiest way to find what you're looking for is go on to Google or any other search engine that is available. <laughs> don't want to be a bit biased. Um, and type in, you know, tech awards, animal care, and it'll probably bring up the page link straight away to the page um, and you can go straight there. However, if you do, for example, land on. Oh, hold for it to load the home page. So this is the home page of Pearson. and you think, oh, my gosh, where do I go from here? The easiest thing to do is to go to qualifications. And if you go down on to the yellow, the orangey side, there is one that says tech awards. And you can click on that and that will bring you to the tech award page. OK, so from here, you can go into different directions depending on what you're looking for. Um, so we will in a second, I'll show you how to go to our section animal care. Um, there is also a frequently asked questions area, which is amazing because there's quite a lot of questions with it. them obviously only starting in 22 and um, there's quite a lot of things in there. So that's useful things and where you can find additional training going forward. So let's start with looking at the qualification that we're looking at today. So you click on the A to Z. Sorry, that was probably a bit quick, wasn't it? Um, so you click on the alphabet. We're lucky we're A. So you go to A, you go to animal care um, and then you get onto this page here. Um, and this is where you kind of start. The quickest and easiest way to do is if you just want the spec, you can download it from here. If you want other resources, if you come down to this like light, light greeny blue box and just click on any of them, it doesn't really matter because you'll bring it to the same page. You then get to this page, which is all your course materials. And as you can see, you've got different categories down here. And as you click on them, you get to what you need. So we've got the specification. Click the little down button there, you've got specification. Sample assessment material. So this is the stuff that I was, this is what I used for the past papers. So you can have a look here. You've got component three um, and you've got some assessment materials here as well. So again, you'll have answers and stuff and everything that you need is in here. Some of them will be padlocked, not necessarily these ones. We'll come to internal assessments. That's probably where we'll find it. Um, yeah, so this is the some reports. Some of them have padlocks on them. I mean, I can click on them and open them up because I've got I'm logged in. Um, but you might have to ask your exam office to get passwords. So if you've got if you run the qualification, you will have access. You just need to find out who has it and then go from there. So let's go through. So I've oh, sorry, I jumped a little bit, so I'm just going to move back a bit. So we've got the specification and we've got the sample assessment material here. Um, and this will be not only for component three, which we looked at today, but you've also got some for one and two. Internal assessment. So this is obviously, like I say, this goes through moderation. So um, you've got some admin support. There's obviously other training, which I'll show you in a second, which will help. Oh, sorry, pressed it too much. Um, you've got some tracking documents to help with your marking and stuff. Um, let's click on the side so I don't click too much. You've got the marking grids. And then you've got the it says principal exam officer. So basically, like a lead examiner report for component three, these are like the principal moderator reports for one and two. So again, you can read them and see what went well, what didn't go well to kind of help prepare you. So that's a really key module. Then you've got the internal assessment. So when you decide to do your assessment um, for the internal ones, you'll have to, you'll come here to get whatever it is. So this is this is what was January 24. Um, obviously there'll be another one in June and then that so on so you will come here and get whatever papers you need whatever day it is you're doing and then the older ones are available later on so you can have a look at them so you should be able to probably get, get hold of these if you've not if you've not seen them so you can kind of get these sort of tests with the students etc there will be one that says external assessments and that'll be your past um have your past papers in and also have your lead examiner reports because there's not been any sat at this point in time. There isn't any there, but it will be another option. You've got the statement and then you've got any some learning materials. So you've got curriculum planning, some um, example of standardis standardisation materials, which is really good, kind of like marked and showed how it's marked and a low mark, high marks. So they're really handy to do for your components one and two. Past training, which I'll show you how to get some of the another place to get them in a minute. Teaching guides, and then obviously if you need the transition material from previous qualification. So that's kind of like shows you everything you need for animal care. But obviously, let's have a look at some other stuff that is just tech award um, general. So I said the frequently asked questions is a good area because there's quite a lot of questions that have been asked and we anything that we get that's regularly in training, not just for this qualification, but for many ones, 
get in here so you can if you've got a question first place to do is come here have a look scroll through them and then you should be able to find your answer and if not then you can obviously go into the next stage from there um let's go back a minute no why don't we go back Ooh. on to tech awards so then the other thing that's useful is training so if this is your first training you think oh well i want to look at the moderation or i want to do the um get ready to teach don't click on that shall we? <laughs> click on the book a place one sorry um and that'll bring you onto this page then you go on to tech award um you go and take award for animal care because that's what we want to do so you've got request center-based training which you obviously have the option to do live training so there's training that have dates and stuff for future training um it's gonna bring it up yes yeah, so you've got these two that are coming up that you can obviously book on to and enjoy at any point in time i'm not going to obviously join to see what's available when even and then you've got sorry keeps jumping contact us so if that's where you need more help then you can contact us so if you don't have in the frequently asked questions you're answering you need further support that's where you click there you've got the getting ready to teach recording You've got the moderation training and you'll obviously have this training here um, and then bite size. So we did some short kind of videos to kind of talk about some of the major um, considerations that were coming up. So best practice for PPE, good examples of handling, getting ready for moderation process, like component one breakdown. So all these little short videos, they're all like you see under four minutes. They're just short, sweet to the point. And they just kind of hopefully help you with some frequently asked questions. So, again, that's another good area to come and have a look at. The only other thing that I really want to kind of quickly show you is if you go to support and you want to look at Excel Online, Exam Wizard, My BTEC, any of these kind of resources that I talked about, Results Plus, this is a good place to kind of go to find them. So, hopefully, that has helped you with those kind of things. So there is a link if you've got it to the training page, which is the page that I showed you with all the links of how to find a further training. Um, and there is obviously different additional support available for um, Ask the Experts, past training videos, etc. like I've just said. So you can get all that and I've shown you where to find it. So hopefully that has um, helped you and now you kind of feel you can understand the external assessment a bit more or know where to find all the information. Um, obviously, if this was alive, you'd have the opportunity to do um, Q and A, but if you haven't, obviously please go to the resources that I said, and then go to um, the contact us if you need further assistance. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed it, found it beneficial, and I'll hopefully see you soon.